Ehsan Nurani, music director, of course needs no introduction, is joining us on NDTV. Thanks very much um, for speaking with us. It has been, uh, you know, extremely, extremely sad what happened yesterday. Um, you know, your your thoughts. Well, I'm, I'm really, I mean, the shock, I don't even know how to describe it because, you know, you know KK, you know, to be such a, I mean, basically a fit guy, a happy person, you know, on top of his art, you know, he was like he never drank or smoked or anything. And then to hear that this happened to him, it's like really like a hammer's fallen on our heads. You can't get over it, you know, that this could have happened to him. And, um, and uh, I mean, unfortunately, that's the whole thing, you know, I mean, with a heart attack, you don't know that you're getting one. You know, you could be thinking that you've got indigestion or something, or you're just feeling hot as it was yesterday. But God, if, you know, I mean, I wish he'd, somebody could have taken him to the hospital first instead of going to the hotel, you know. And uh, But, you know, that's how these things are. You never know how it creeps up on you. And the next thing you know, you've got a big problem. It's really sad, really, really sad. Well, it is incredibly sad. And, and you know, I think... Uh, it it's very interesting that you say that he was a teetotaler and he didn't smoke because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the questions that is asked uh, when, when when a person of his age, he was just 53 years old and he yeah. suffered, of course, a very massive heart attack, which is why he didn't even make it to the hospital. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, there are, there are several lifestyle questions that are raised because it sort of, of comes with, with show business in a certain sense. But you're saying that wasn't true in this case. Absolutely not. I mean, and, and he was like the epitome of fitness. I mean, he worked out and he always, he looked great. I mean, every time the thing is that the other, I believe uh, 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 Shankar met him some time back and said that, you know, are you Benjamin Button by any chance, you know? I mean, you like seem to be working in reverse. You seem to get get younger every time, you know, I see you. And, you know, we had met him at the airport some time back and he looked great. He was like really in good shape. And more than anything, see, the thing is that, you know, we know that, you know, I mean, he was not a stressed person at all. He was very, very clear in his way of thinking, what he wanted out of his life, his dedication to his craft, and, you know, he completely stuck to that. So, you know, he was not a stressed person either. And uh, it's just, you know, how can this happen to somebody like him? It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, well it is It is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, but Esan Urani is somebody who knew him, um, you know, at, at a personal mm. level as well. What more can you tell uh, fans about him? What was he like as a person? What was he like as a, as a colleague? Well, you know, I worked with KK the first time back in the 90s, you know, when Loy had just moved to Bombay from Delhi. And uh, Loy used to teach at KK school in Delhi at Mount St. Mary's. And KK was one of his students. And I was doing this jingle, which was for some watch company, I think Timex, something like that. And uh, I asked Loy, you know, I, I want like a rock singer to come and sing this, but not the rock singers that we normally work with. So Loy said, why don't you try KK? So I said, sure, you know, and I got in touch with him and he came over and he came in full of smiles. You know, hey, Loy, how are you doing? Nice to see you, this, that. And uh, recording with him was such a lovely, pleasant experience, you know. And I just said, you know, I told Loy, not only is this guy a good singer, he's like a really nice guy, you know. And uh, that's what he stuck with. He was always that. He was always that person. In spite of the stardom and everything, then he the next time we worked with him was on a film song, which was for for Dil Chahte, which was Koi Kahe Keta Rahe. Then after that, he sang uh, It's the Time to Disco for us from Kal Ho Na Ho. So, you know, these are all iconic. We've shared some iconic songs with him. And the thing is that the moments we've shared with him are really more precious. You know, the singing, everything aside, it's just that the person that he was, he was always positive, always smiling, always bubbly. You can see him on stage. When you see him on stage, you know, he's there with the audience. I mean, he's not with them physically, but he's up there on stage, but he's with the audience. They, that's why they loved him so much, you know, and um, that was the beautiful part about him. And that's what one's really going to miss about him. And whenever you met him, see, the thing is, we're all busy people. We all do our thing. And uh, but whenever you met him, wherever it was, you know, it was just like, you know, you know, it was your back into the moment. You know, It's not like you haven't seen each other for three, four months. He's such a lovely guy. Well, that's uh, that's just so so heartwarming to hear. Uh, but you know, as a, as a musician yourself, as somebody who understands the finer nuances of of this mm -hmm. particular industry, I also want to ask you. You know, he has a very versatile body of work from uh, you know a very sentimental, deep, emotional uh, connect yeah. songs to it's the time to disco. So you know, that's that's a huge sort of. Um, uh, transition in terms or, or, or a lot of uh, versatility in terms of, you know, his yeah. music and the kind of music that he lent his voice to. And, you know, the amazing thing is that he came from a background of rock. He was a rock singer in Delhi. He sang in a rock band. 
and uh, then he moved to bombay to try and make it i mean and with no i mean i don't think he had any intentions also of you know any plan as to what he was going to do whether it is the film industry or whether it was singing jingles which he did a lot of by the way he sang a lot of jingles but uh, he was always willing to learn you know it, it, that's the very important thing for any musician especially a singer where you can have an open mind to adjust yourself to what is what you're called upon to do you know so whatever song it was like he sang a song for us but jane ye kyun kya hua from kartik calling kartik which is lovely soft ballad and you know he just put himself to it it didn't come like he, it was not, not like he come into the studio and say that hey man i need to leave in two hours he'd be there for as as long as you wanted him for us you know to sing the song the way we wanted it and the way it was which made him happy so he was a very thorough musician you know he was a musician you know there's singers and there's musicians you know pkk was a musician you know all mm-hmm. like right through right um yeah. asan i also want to ask you uh, you know about the circumstances um, yesterday and a lot has been said there's there's, there's there's a lot of politics blame game over mm-hmm. you know what happened at the mm-hmm. concert uh, he was you know looking a bit unwell he was yes. seen sweating profusely he even complained yeah. uh, and gestured about you know the air conditioning not yeah. being effective etc you know how how do you look at all of this you know you think that you know some of these conditions often are um are difficult or you know more needs to perhaps be done in order to make situations concerts more conducive i mean uh, you know which way would you look at this safer yeah, for well, both the performing the artists is, uh, as well as fans yeah see the thing is a concert a live concert you know be it a corporate show or a wedding or even a you know live concert like he did like a college gig hmm. is very volatile there's a lot of movement there's a lot of crowding there's a lot of technology there's a lot of stuff that can fail you know we've we heard a few years ago rahman's concert in america got cancelled because the entire truss fell down and luckily it was during the it was when they were setting it up and it wasn't during the concert but stuff like this can happen during the concert i do believe that is very important for there to be some kind of emergency you know or maybe a doctor or you know oxygen or an ambulance or something always waiting in standby for any of these kind of uh, hmm. occasions you know where you know that somebody can get injured you know or have or anything can happen to anybody you know and the thing is that it is a crowded place getting out of there you know is difficult so you know it is uh, there should be something which should be st- uh, stipulated for all these public gatherings and concerts that there should be emergency care you know at hand well one sincerely hopes that this this absolutely tragic incident serves as a wake up call for that uh because yeah. you know those those pictures of him uh walking out amid the crowd while he was yeah. you know looking physically unwell you know one had Absolutely. hoped that there was a stretcher or a doctor to uh perhaps you know administer emergency care yeah. um and, yeah. and, and and you know one can sort of keep talking about this what has happened has happened but one sincerely so hopes that you know this does serve as some kind um of a right. wake up call Absolutely absolutely Asan Nurani thank you very much for speaking with me My pleasure my pleasure take care bye bye thank you